the topic of today's video is density functional theory so, so why do we need density functional theory first of all you know that the schrodinger equation can be solved easily for one electron system okay schrodinger equation can be solved easily for one electron system okay what is one electron system a one electron system is a type of system in which there is only one electron like if i have an atom with only one electron then schrodinger equation can be solved easily for that atom okay but if i have a system of multiple electrons okay like if i have a molecule in which there are a lot of electrons or if i have an atom that contains more than one electron then i can say for multiple electronic system it's very hard to solve the schrodinger equation why because in a multiple electronic system we have to solve the schrodinger equation for each of the electronic part okay then so we introduce some approximation so what we do we introduce some approximation and one of them is dft okay so moving on density functional calculations are like ab initio and semi empirical calculation okay density functional calculations like dft calculations are just like that of ab initio and semi empirical calculation why because they are based on the schrodinger equation okay so if i talk about uh, so if i compare dft with other two methods that of ab initio and semi empirical in ab initio and semi empirical what do we do we have to consider each of the electron in a system okay let me describe it with the help of a diagram as you can see here that i have an ion and i have three electrons okay so for using the ab initio and for using the semi empirical method what we have to do we have to consider each of these electrons we have to find the wave function for each of these electrons okay so but what if i talk about the dft in case of dft what do we use we use the electron density okay instead of treating electrons separately what do we do we just use an electron density we just consider an electron density around the ion okay so here coming back however unlike the other two methods dft does not calculate a conventional wave function okay in dft we do not calculate the old wave function the conventional wave function but instead what do we do we derive the electron distribution directly okay we derive the electron density function okay so i describe all of this in this video okay so first of all you need to know what is a functional a functional is a mathematical entity related to a function okay functional is just a mathematical term that is related to a function density functional calculations are usually faster than ab initio but slower than semi empirical so if i talk about their speed then density functional calculations are usually faster than the ab initio but they are slower than the semi empirical method okay so first of all moving on what i have here is a functional okay what is a functional a functional is actually a function of a function okay function of function so if i have a function okay and it is being applied on an other function okay a function that is being applied on an other function as okay so moving on in dft the functional is the electron density which is a function of space and time so if we talk about dft in dft the functional is electron density which is further a function of space and time okay uh, let me repeat it again that in dft the functional is actually the electron density which is a function of space and time and if i talk about electron density electron density is further a function of space and time okay so electron density is used in dft as fundamental property unlike hartree fock method where the which deals directly with the many body wave function so if i talk if i compare dft with hartree fock method in hartree fock method what we have to do we have to deal with many body wave function okay as you have seen here that if i uh, if i want to apply the hartree fock method then i have to consider each of these electrons separately but if i have to apply but if i have to apply the uh, dft then what will i do i will just consider the electron density okay so moving on using the electron density significantly speeds up the calculation okay so if i use this electron density then uh, then my calculation is speed up okay whereas the many body electronic wave function is a function of 3n variables okay what is 3n variable so whenever you are going to read density function theory you will also always see about 3n variables so what is actually a 3n variable so if i talk about coordinates you know that there are three types of coordinate x y z okay if i talk about a many body electronic system as you know that in many body electronic system there are a lot of electrons okay there are a lot of electrons so if i talk about a single electron a single electron has coordinates in three directions x y and z so this is a three variable okay these three are the these three are the coordinates these three are the variables okay so if i talk about the electron electron has x y and z axis so if i have a multiple electrons say n number of electrons then i have to calculate wave function for 3n variable okay what i have to do I have, then i will have to calculate the wave function of 3n variables okay so let me just describe it with the help of an example of water molecule as you know that in water molecule how many electrons are there in hydrogen there is one electron again in other hydrogen if i talk about water molecule h2o okay i'm giving here an example of h2o and as you know the oxygen has eight electrons whereas hydrogen two hydrogens two hydrogens have two electrons so overall electrons become 10 okay so overall electrons become 10 as you know the condition for 3n variables 
the three L. Okay, three means I have variables in X, Y, and Z direction. Okay, if I multiply three with the number of electrons ten, then I get answer equal to thirty. So the next thing I will have, as as you can see, thirty. Thirty is a big number, and it will take a lot of time. What do we do in this case? We use the DFT. We use the electronic distribution instead of the ten electrons. We just consider a one electron density. Okay, we just consider them as a single electron density instead of ten different electrons. We just consider a single electron density. Okay, so Hohenberg and Cohen stated the theorem which tells us that the electron density is very useful. Okay, they tell us uh, Hohenberg and Cohen were two scientists that stated theorem which tells us that electron density is very useful actually. The Hohenberg-Cohen theorem states that asserts that the density of any system determines all the corrosive properties of the system. Okay, so according to Hohenberg-Cohen theorem, okay, according to the Hohenberg-Cohen theorem, the density of a system, okay, the density of the system contains determines. All the ground state properties of the system. Okay, the density, the electron density of the system contains all the ground state properties of the system. So, okay, so, okay. so in this case, the total ground state of many electron system is a function of density. So, I can say that the total ground state energy of the many electron system is a function of density. Means that the total ground state energy of my given system, of my given many electron system, depends upon the density. Okay. So according to the previous Hohenberg theorem, if I have the electron density, okay, then I can find the elect, then I can find the total energy of our system, okay. So by focusing on the electron density, it is possible to derive an effective one electron type Schrodinger equation, okay. So we will be focusing on all of these parts.